Hey guys and welcome to EBAT Tutorial. Today we're going to talk about something which is so important but widely forgotten, especially in the modern game, is the block. Now, there's a little bit of what's called the modern block. We're going to show you variations of blocks and how important it really is. Guy. Yes. Back in the day, when you used to be a top dog as a junior, you didn't block much. No. Do you feel that could have changed your game? Yeah, so um, I just wanted to attack all the time, as you do. <laughs> yeah. The ball would be down here and I'd still try and hit it 100 miles an hour. But um, no, in all seriousness, I think if I would have had a bit of a better block at the time, it would have improved my game from here to here because there were certain players who didn't give me the opportunity to attack all the time. And sometimes I was on the back foot and that's when I struggled because my blocking wasn't as good as it should have been. I mean, I could still block. I remember one time in a tournament, he told me, someone was giving me heavy topspin, he just said, aim for the bottom of the net, and it worked. I remember, in-game ta in tactics. But if you wouldn't have said that, I would have lost the game. So it's really, really important sometimes, just to get you, keep you in the game sometimes, and then you can attack after. Or if someone's, someone's really good at attacking, you need to be able to hold, and then try and counter-attack after that. It's really important. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so let's have a look, in-depth look into the block. Okay, so tip number one is first trying to make the opponent or asking your opponent to topspin to one location. Generally, you want to block with the backhand. With the forehand, you're looking to counter topspin. Yes, of course, sometimes when you don't have time, you block with the forehand. Now, in the modern game, we try to look to play what's called an aggressive block. You don't just put your bat there. You're looking to put a little bit of energy on the ball. So therefore, you're generating the energy from the elbow and pushing forward. The other thing you want to be aware of is your distance. If you're too close, the ball hasn't bounced up, it'll be very hard for you to block it on the table. You most likely will go off the end or in the net. The timing has to be sublime. If you're too far, you're giving your opponent too much time. So you want to try and measure your distance in and around the 45 degree angle, one arm, one bat, and that will work according to your height as well. So this is the distance for me. And over here, you're, leaning, you're looking to lean forward, therefore the bat angle is closed. If you lean up, the bat angle opens up and most likely your uh, stroke will go off the end. So once you've got these basic fundamentals and you practice a routine where it's regular and you know where the ball's going, you start to learn to know how to change the angles, how to feel the ball on the bat, and then everything should flow from there. Tip number two. This is where you're looking to block while moving. It's easy when you're static. You can just put your bat in the way, really. But when you're moving, it's when everything changes because your body angle is changing. The, uh, the, mo the movement can adapt and change the angle of your bat. So you have to be aware of all these things. So when you practice moving, then you can start to learn to change the angles. So we're going to practice a block here, a block in the middle, a block back to the backhand side, and wide, I'll block with my forehand. So one, two. Three, four. Good. One more. Good. Okay, what you'll notice there is that I'm trying to stay as stable as possible with my body. If I move around too much, the movement will then distort my uh, block and it will make many, uh, I'll make many unforced errors. But if I'm trying to stay really fluent and flow with my block, then generally I'll be more consistent. The other key important part here is I'm meeting the ball. I don't let it come to me. I try to meet the ball, meet the ball. Also with my forehand, I meet the ball in front of me. Tip number three is irregular blocking. So we just did regular blocking, which is when you know where the ball's coming. Now we're going to do irregular, which means we don't know where the ball's coming. So um, back in the 80s and 90s, the top Chinese players were winning 50% of their points by blocking. And the Swedes, they were winning 30% of their points by blocking. 
So what they did is they went back to the training ground, training room, they started working on their blocking, and eventually they became better than the Chinese at it, and they were getting higher percentages, and then they started beating the Chinese, just by working on one simple stroke. Okay, guys, so when you're doing this uh, type of exercise, irregular blocking, first, you must have a good recovery position, meaning you want to try and cover around 30% of the table with your backhand, 70% with your forehand. So for me, I'm here. For you right-handers, you'll be here. So you're blocking here, and you're, you've got this with your forehand to cover. The second thing you want to think about is try and have a neutral position. This is where the bat is in between the backhand and forehand, in and around this zone. So this allows you to play a backhand or a forehand. So after each stroke, try to recover back in the middle, which then allows you to play either or. Because if you recover on one side, then it's a big distance to play another stroke. And obviously over time, the more you practice it, the more you'll start to read the body language and start to recover a little bit quicker. But it takes time and practice, as the Swedes did back in the 80s and 90s, and they managed to overcome the mighty Chinese. Okay, well, as you can see, the block is still very, very important in the modern game. Uh, today, I would just suggest to try and be a bit more aggressive with the block rather than just to put your bat in the way. And over time, you'll start to learn how to adjust and adapt. Um, a little tip I like to tell players, and I'm sure you've said it before as well, is about the grip. Do you remember as to what kind of grip do you have when you're blocking? Are you looking to squeeze the handle? Or are you looking to stay relaxed? Um, or does it intervene? Well, I have a, looser, a bit of a looser grip on the backhand. Okay. And then I like to, yeah, squeeze. And also just take the ball nice and early as well, so I can control the impact of the ball onto the back. Okay. And I squeeze my arm just nice. so I can control it so my back doesn't move back. Nice, so you don't get like a kickback. Okay, yeah. so when you squeeze just at point of contact, that gives you that little bit of extra control. And for me, I also try to use this squeezing, especially if someone gives me lots and lots of spin, I really squeeze even harder to really control that spin. And like I said before, I will try and aim for the bottom of the net if someone's really loaded it up. Yeah. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for subscribing, for following, and just uh, keep following us, and we'll see you on the next video.